Baseball in the 19th Century, 1873. Wanted, a national game. With all their shortcomings, the Associated Press agents are very good judges of the value of news. With this fact in mind, it is a striking proof of the rapidly declining interest in the national game that the recent championship award to the Boston Baseball Club was not thought worth a line in the general press telegrams. Five years ago, such an event would have aroused the liveliest interest throughout the prevailing excitement. The advent of the game was to mark a new era in athletic sports in this country. Baseball was to be to American youth what the noble game of cricket to their English brothers. At last we had a national game. Hartford Current, Tuesday, January 7th, 1873. The 1873 Major League Baseball season would see the Boston Red Stockings claim the best record for the second straight season with a 43-16 and mark, winning the 1873 National Association pennant. Again led by star pitcher Al Spaulding, as well as future Hall of Famers, catcher Deacon White, first baseman Jim O'Rourke, shortstop George Wright, his brother center fielder Harry Wright, as well as stars Ross Barnes, Andy Leonard, and Philadelphia Athletics defector Bob Addy. The three teams vying for last place in their only professional season would include the Washington Blue Legs, featuring a young future star in Paul Hines, the Elizabeth Resolutes, featuring veteran catcher Doug Allison, and the Baltimore Marylands. Ross Barnes would lead the league in batting for the second straight season with a 431 batting average, 616 slugging percentage, and an OPS of 1,080 to go with 44 RBI and an OPS plus of 207. Cap Anson would place second in batting with a 398 average for the fifth place Philadelphia Athletics, while Barnes teammate Deacon White would place third with 392, and another teammate, George Wright, would place fourth with 387, while former teammate Cal McVeigh would find success in his new role with the Baltimore Canaries batting 380, good enough for fifth in the league. Lipman Pike would lead the league in home runs for a third straight season in 1873, hitting four long balls and a 316 batting average for the third place Baltimore Canaries. Bobby Matthews would lead the league in war with 9.6 for the fourth place New York Mutuals, while also leading the league in strikeouts with 79, walks with 62, Wild pitches with 23 and placing second in ERA with 2.58 in 443 innings pitched. Al Spaulding would lead the league in wins with 41, games played with 60, innings pitched with 496.2, and 54 games started, which would be tied with Jim Britt, who was in his second and final Major League season after leading the league in losses for a second straight season with 36, while also leading the league in complete games with 51, hits allowed with 696, earned runs with 218, and batters faced with 2,353 in 480.2 innings pitched for the 6th place Brooklyn Atlantics. Cherokee Fisher would win the ERA crown for a second straight season in a backup pitching role with the Philadelphia Athletics with a 1.81 ERA in 84.1 innings pitched while also playing outfield and batting 261 in 275 plate appearances. The defensive stars of 1873 included Bill Craver of the Baltimore Canaries, who would lead all catchers in fielding percentage with 933. Everett Mills of the Baltimore Canaries would lead all first basemen in fielding percentage with 949. Ross Barnes of the Boston Red Stockings would lead all second basemen in fielding percentage with 857. Davey Force of the Baltimore Canaries would lead all third basemen in fielding percentage with 830. George Wright of the Boston Red Stockings would lead all shortstops with a fielding percentage of 826. And Tom York of the Baltimore Canaries would lead all outfielders in fielding percentage with 872. What do the highest baseball honors now signify? Simply that Boston last year was willing to pay professionals more than other cities. The year before it was Philadelphia, and before that Chicago and Cincinnati. Middletown had some aspirations that way, and it only needs some enthusiastic citizen of means to go $5,000 or so better than Boston to float the whip pennant on the bank of the Connecticut. 
There can, of course, be no manly rivalry in such a state of things. We are waiting for a great American novel, for an American opera, and a drama worthy of the name. We must also wait for our national game. Hartford Current, Tuesday, January 7th, 1873.